The haunting legends of a mighty Bigfoot have made man's blood run cold for centuries, some terrific and some terrifying. The Southern Appalachian Mountains whisper the mysteries of this strange and powerful creature through its smoky hills and ominous embrace. This is Brandon Thomas with Expanding Reality, elated to announce our very first Expanding Reality Excursions Befriending Bigfoot event. It's going to take place on a beautiful 27-acre ranch in Blairsville, Georgia, May 15th through the 20th. This intimate conference is going to feature Bigfoot adventure hikes in three different states, river kayaking, nightly presentations from such incredible presenters as Alexander Petikoff, Chris Matthew, Dave Zed, Preston Dennett, and many more. Also, we're going to be doing some UFO watching, some jam sessions, all kinds of hangouts. Visit expandingrealitypodcast.com slash events for more information. That's expandingrealitypodcast.com slash events. We'll see you there. A choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a run. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expanding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very. Expanding reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas. On this incredibly cool episode, Josh Monday comes by and brings a presentation along. So make sure if you're an audio only audience member here that you check the link in the show description. It'll lead you to the video so that you can catch it in its full glory. As well, check the link down there uh, for the Patreon so that you guys can catch the afterthoughts. Josh and I go really deep in this one in the afterthoughts. So go check that out and others will be hosted there as well as the hangouts and additional expansion content. And we appreciate you supporting your favorite show. Now we're getting in the physical with this thing with our event, our befriending Bigfoot event. And this is going to take place May 15th through the 20th. Beautiful Blairsville, Georgia there. So come hang out with us. All sorts of hikes, adventures, kayaking, presenters, they're all to hang out. It's a non-exclusive, exclusive event. Like there's not gonna be somebody standing behind a booth making sure that you've paid money to uh, buy a book of this person before they sign your thing and you can talk to them. Like everybody's hanging out together, guys. We're all exploring these places, hanging out together. The list of presenters and everything can be found at the link listed below. Make sure that you guys check this once in a lifetime thing out. Gonna be absolutely amazing. More on that later, but for now, and without any further ado, Josh Monday. Josh Monday. We are recording this on a Thursday, but it is so cool to see you, my friend. How are you, dude? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, my show is Josh Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. I have about 167 episodes out. And uh, we just take a conspiracy show, people how it relates to the Bible. And we also do like a straight conspiracy show or we'll do a straight Bible show or we mix the two together, you know. So that's my show. Um, my YouTube is Josh Monday Music and Podcast. If you want to look at that, I do have uh, rap music on there um, and also, you know, Christian rap and then also, uh, you know, podcast. And um, my if you want to look me up on Spotify, it's Josh Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. Any audio, Spotify, Apple, anything of the sort. So, yeah. Outstanding. And it's all going to be linked down below, guys. It's YouTube, Instagram, and Spotify, as well as the guy that connected us, Tyler Hansen. His episode 249 will be located down in the show description as well. So you guys can reference on over and catch up with Tyler if you have not caught that episode. And if you have, maybe you go back and say, you know what? I uh, listened to it but didn't hear that part. And that was valuable. So, uh, <laughs> Josh, we have a mutual friend in our friend Tyler here. So, first of all, how'd you and Tyler meet, if you don't mind? Uh, I think we met where... I started just following him. Uh, I saw him like lifting weights and talking about flat earth. So I was like, cool, man. I, I, uh, I know I can already relate. Um, I lift weights and I also do biblical cosmology shows. And so I just, I started following him and uh, we started talking back and forth and we've been talking back and forth, like, you know, at least every two days or so 
we're at least contacting each other. He does uh, videos. He puts them out on, um, and he, and he usually sends me the video and asks me my opinion on it, you know, because he does some Bible stuff mixed with uh, conspiracy as well, you know, so different, different theories, different beliefs than I have in some ways, but he's, uh, you know, with revelation, the end times, but it's okay. It's uh, he's presenting truth to people and, and in, uh, in different ways. And, I think it's uh it's definitely good for the industry and I think he does a great job at at speaking, presenting, and he's and he's got a big audience. Boom, there's his shout out. Nice job. So there you go. Uh, guys, I'll always find uh Josh will be down there, but Tyler's episode will absolutely be down there. He's a mutual buddy. And if you didn't catch it again, check that out. We also had a hangout with him that was amazing, man. And that actually inspired this conversation. After that hangout, he messaged me and said, dude. You've got to have a debate with Josh Monday. And I was like, well, I'm not into debates, but I will conversate with someone about the ideas that we have and perspectives we have on the world. And you're fascinating, dude. Uh, as far as, again, your approach, what you believe, where your heart lies, and your area of study and interest, it's a compulsion. And it's interesting. It's deep, you know? So Tyler does boast as the fittest flat earther. Have you taken him up on that challenge? Are you guys going to arm wrestle nope. for that title or anything? You're no, good because... with him having it? He knows I have the the arms, but he's uh, I I called him one time and he goes, oh, I was thinking about you on my twentieth mile to my bike ride. I was like, okay, so you're the fittest flat earther for yeah. sure because I'm not doing no twenty mile bike rides. I know that. Maybe <laughs> so. there's a delineation. You guys can put it in categories. Like you got the arms, he's got the you know uh, cardio, right? The cardio yeah, is flat, cardio is flat earther is probably his thing. That's great. <laughs> well, um, let's talk uh, how you were raised. So were you brought up um, with the. Um, the Hebrew traditions, and then you said, you know what, these actually don't align with my inner value, and so I'm actually going to look into Christianity and then go that way. Or were you raised on any other kind of faith, or did, were you introduced into the Bible as, you know, just happens to be the perfect religion where you were born? Well, my dad, uh, actually, he, he was he was Christian, and he showed us the Bible, but he, like, he used to smoke weed, and, and he was kind of a laid-back guy, but he would, like, also teach the Bible to us, uh, taught us, like, uh, conspiracies as well, like the JFK assassination, uh, Federal Reserve banking, and you know all the all the bankers and and uh, Illuminati type deal. So he would te teach us that stuff, and then Y two K is coming, and end of the world's coming. You know all the, a lot of stuff like that. You know, but it, yeah, he was he was good at at planting the seed. Um, but I veered off. You know, for a lot of my life before I joined the army, I was uh, veered off into drugs. Uh, a lot of alcohol. I was rapping, you know, secular rapping. So I was on stage hosting hot body contests, doing all that. Joined the military to kind of uh, make, you know, get my my life in order, you know, no more drugs. Uh, I knew that once I joined, I didn't want to like do that anymore. So had my uh, girlfriend at the time, but my wife now. And uh, we just... Uh, I just learned discipline through the military, which would straighten out everything. And also started getting into my spiritual walk. And uh, when I deployed, I did a, uh, I did a talent show and I did like a, a Christian hip hop song. So I kind of mixed the two together, you know, Christianity and, and, uh, and rap. And I won the, the talent show and I came back and just started recording an album, a uh, Christian album. So yeah. And uh, just full fledged dedicated myself to the Lord hundred percent and uh and did a conspiracy and christian song and i put that song out it started going on uh i started you know sending it to everybody i could like a dangerous world podcast shout out to them my family thinks i'm crazy mark steves uh shout out to him uh legit bat podcast shout out to them all three of them actually gave me my my chance to to do a podcast and uh legit bat uh podcast uh the, the host helped me out tremendously showing me what to do and that's how i got to this point basically doing a show and all that stuff but yeah christianity was in my life and i just didn't you know i just denied it at first doing my own thing like the prodigal son came back to god and now that's where i'm at now it's fascinating and shout out to all those folks yeah we knew mark and uh, legit bad joe and jen and all them really well I love those people yeah. shout outs yes. all around guys you know i'm i'm curious have you investigated any other sects of Christianity or religions that made you think, you know, maybe there's another alternative here, or were you just happy with the one that you were presented with and just sort of said, well, there's shit, I don't need to look any further? No, I uh, actually, I have people on my show that have opposing views with no problem, and I, I, I let them tell, you know, say their, say their piece. Uh, I have studied, uh, you know, Mormonism. I've studied Jehovah's Witness. Uh, I've studied, uh, you know, all millennialism compared to uh dispensationalism, you know, different eschatologies. I've studied a bunch of different stuff. Now, have I studied, uh, I haven't done deep dives on, um, 
on um you know muslims but i do listen to opposing views with i like to listen to debates i like to find out everything you know just because i'm I, i'm like a christian apologist so when someone comes and asks me a question i want to be able to answer that so i listen to pastor's perspective i listen to a lot of uh christian apologists a lot of debates and uh even when they're opposing my view, I want to listen to it because I want to find out what else is out there. And I think it's the best way to, to know what someone else thinks so that you can, you can, you can lead them, guide them in the best way that you can. You know, I feel like I, I'm not a pastor. I don't have a uh, theology degree, but what it is, is since I'm on the microphone and now I'm representing God, I want to represent him to the best of my ability. So I try to study as much as I can. Conspiracies as well. That side I could study as well, but yeah, as far as the Bible, I try to do my best, you know, Interesting, man. What um what was the first conspiracy that you really got into? I know you said your dad mentioned a few. So you were just kind of yeah. raised with this mindset to question authority, read between the lines, not take the yep. official story. But was there one that maybe independent of your father you discovered on your own or that just came to you that just sort of solidified or brought everything home? Well, uh, first 9-11, right? And then Sandy Hook. That was the second one, you know, and uh, that was before I actually I joined the military uh, 2013 and I already knew about 9-11 from watching documentaries, but I didn't really dig into it too much. So watched a little Alex Jones uh, and then I started like studying it. And and then once uh, Sandy Hook happened, I was studying that one like before they had taken all the videos down and everything was available. It was just interesting to me. Um, I, I know that we're not supposed to censor ourselves, but with that one, I, I, I don't I don't talk about that one unless it's like on Spotify or Apple, you know. <laughs> well, I, I can already tell you this probably uh, YouTube's been weird. So we're probably going to just put this on places where it's safe to talk about those things, to be honest with you. So if yeah. you feel well, like you uh, want to say something about it, you're welcome to. It, it's all good. Everything, everything I, I talk about on this presentation I'm going to do, you'll be able to have on YouTube. No problem. We'll be good. <laughs> okay. Fair dinkum. I love it, man. Well, um, dude, this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Did you have a presentation for us that I'm keeping us yeah. from? Yeah. Okay. No, well, I do, man. I do. Definitely, man. I, I do flat earth from a biblical perspective or biblical cosmology. I like to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, I just go through everything I do. I've done this on several different shows. People love it. And, and I think it will be a great thing for your show, you know, your audience, you know, to, I love to this. Let's understand this side. <laughs> Let's roll it, dude. I absolutely love this. You have the ability to share if you want to. Um, and oh, yeah. I'm absolutely can I, grateful. Cool. Can I can I share a screen? Is that cool? Oops. You are Keep absolutely and you have seat. the ability. Um, okay. And then just grateful to you for advance for just kind of uh, talking us through your your mindset ahead of time there, because I just think it's very interesting um, how beliefs can get so anchored and how you can just <laughs> go. Yep, this is it forever. I think it's fascinating, man, because I just don't have that with literally anything, brother. Uh, the only one that I've got is temporary truths. I've talked about this a bunch, but. I, I feel that what the only belief I have available to me with any kind of certainty uh, is the fact that I feel things are very certain now, but that that will probably change with new information. And I'm willing to listen to that information. So that's what's so fascinating about having an anchor point. In some ways, I'm jealous. And in some ways, um, I'm not. You know what I mean? Kind of a thing. But I think it's fascinating either way. Thank you. Yeah, I love it, man. Well, um, yeah. So uh, first, I like to go out with the uh, with faith comes by hearing the word of God. It's Roman ten seventeen. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, what kind of faith is being produced if you hear the word of God and yet not believe it? If you're a non believer, this is obviously not for you. You know, if you don't believe the Bible, I understand. But this is for believers. Or when you do get into the Bible and you start studying, you understand that faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Right. So, when I go over Bible verses to you for you and you're Christian or a believer, then, um, you know, what kind of faith is being produced if you do, if you hear it, but do not believe it. Okay. Another one is, um, uh, all scriptures inspired by God. Uh, it's, it's, a. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, okay, for instruction in righteousness that man, that the man may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, right? So all scripture is inspired by God um, and that faith cometh by hearing the word of God, right? Um, as well, uh, Titus 1.2 also says it's uh, that uh, God cannot lie. Um, and in Hebrews 11, it says that um, it's impossible for God to lie. So when I'm going through these verses, understand that it's, it's inspired by God. Uh, God is not going to be lying to you. Uh, no deceit, no deception is, is what I 100% believe. The Bible is my 
is my foundation, right? And then I go into these conspiracies and and I feel like Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. I feel like the Bible is the truth. So I just, I basically filter everything through the Bible. And and if it's not lining up with the Bible, then, you know, I I just, for me, I just don't believe it, right? Um, via science, you know, I filter science through the Bible, via, you know, different things I filter through the Bible. Now, if the Bible does not mention it, I, I understand, you know, some people are like, what doesn't mention giraffes, you know, so do you not believe in giraffes now? That's not what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> it does mention all animals, right? So that includes it, but just want to let you guys know that. Um, and also I think it's important to know that uh, with Genesis, like how reliable is the book of Genesis, right? Uh, we believe Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Um, if you look at um, Numbers 12, verses 4 through 8, um, the Lord is speaking to Aaron and Miriam and Moses, right? And when he's speaking to Aaron and, and Miriam, it's kind of interesting because um, he says, I come to prophets in visions and in dreams, but when it comes to Moses, I speak to him face to face or mouth to mouth. So when you're listening to me speak about Genesis uh, or anything in the Torah, Understand that that Moses spoke to God mouth to mouth or face to face, as it says in Numbers. So we need to understand that. So for us, he, it's a pretty reliable source, you know. So um, God, we believe, created the heavens and the earth, right? So I believe he his first seven days of creation, he's he's is not going to be Moses guessing what happened. I believe that God, you know, took him on Mount Sinai and he told them exactly what happened, how he created the heavens and the earth. And I, I take that literal and I take it like God spoke to Moses, like he says right there, face to face. And uh, I think that's a good way to look at the Bible, you know, um, if if you are a Christian. Like, uh, if you're not, yeah, I understand. But um, all right. So that's what I like to get into. And uh, first off, I like to tell you guys what scientists say. So you guys know. Um, I wonder if I have my... Uh, if I could look up this Instagram thing real quick, I have it pulled up and Instagram is there's a, uh, let me see search. There's kind of a, a thing that's, I hope it doesn't come with sound though. Um, Matt, I just, uh, yeah, Matt Landman. Love him. Oh uh, yeah. Tom. We've had him on. Oh, you have. Yep. Got how, a great free was, movie uh, out just for the audience. Uh, Franken skies. It's totally free. You guys can check it out. Actual oh, yeah. com. Oh yeah, he's he's awesome, Tom. There, it is. let's click this. I sent him a message on what I'm gonna go over, and uh, if I can't pull it up, it's all good. I'll be fine with it. But, um, oh wow, okay. I had him searched and ready to go. Yeah, Matt, um, message. There we go. Let's click that, and let's see. Flatter files. Yay. Um, there it is. Perfect. Hopefully it doesn't come with sound. I would like to block that. Nope, doesn't let me do that. All right, no problem. All right, let's do that. I wanted to show you guys what it sh what it shows. Uh, it's a great present presentation. It's what Dave Weiss actually shows, where the the sun is actually chasing, uh, you know, the, the Earth is actually chasing the sun. Anyways, yeah, who we've also good. had on. Yeah. Okay, so you know you know what it is. So all right, so the Earth is 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 on a twenty three point four degree axis, um, uh, spinning at a thousand miles per hour, a thousand forty at the equator. And it's uh, they say it's rotating at 60 or orbiting at 66,600 miles per hour. OK, just letting you guys know. And uh, I just want to let you guys know the fastest bullet actually travels at 1800 miles per hour. Right. So they're basically saying we're going 30 times faster than a bullet orbiting the sun. Right. So we have that. And then at the same time, we're actually chasing the sun. Uh, some sites say 525,000 miles an hour and some say 440,000 miles an hour. Either way, those are numbers that are crazy for us to even comprehend. So it's, it's there's a lot going on, right? So the sun is moving, the earth is, is chasing it, um, and, and we're orbiting at, at faster than a bullet, you know, 30 times faster than a bullet, and then spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, which is faster than the speed of sound. So we have all that stuff going on, um, and none of us feel it, right? We go outside. Our, our, our senses feel like the sky is moving, like, like the Bible is going to describe, and that the earth is fixed and immovable, stationary. That's the way I feel. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the way you feel, uh, Brandon. I feel like anybody that goes outside, it's pretty much what we feel. We don't feel any movement, anything like that. Now, I'm not saying that's proof that it's not moving, but for me, that's how I feel. 
And I feel like it's, it's, it is that the earth is fixed and immovable or stationary personally. Um, if you don't believe that, that's okay. I don't get mad at anybody. <laughs> and then they say the earth is also orbiting the earth. Or the moon is also orbiting this, uh, the earth at 2,288 miles per hour, which is faster than a bullet as well. And uh, I don't know, you've probably studied the moon landing before. I've studied it. If all this is true, uh, can you imagine? I know you thank me for my military service, but if you're an astronaut, bro, that's insane to, to even go out there and land on that thing that's moving 2,200 miles an hour faster than a bullet. We're orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour. We're spinning at 1,000, and you take this little craft made out of aluminum and, sh and shoot right onto it, you know. Apollo 11, right? So 11th shot. I don't know what it was, how, how many times it took him. It seemed like it took him once to us. But anyways, so we got all that going on. So um, and also they said the sun is 93 million miles away. You know, they, uh, they, they calculated that by saying that Venus is a certain size and they just triangulate and, and boom, we got, the, we got the 93 million miles away, right? So closest star as well. That's another thing I think people need to pay attention to. They say that it's 4.4 light years away. Now, a light year is actually 24 trillion miles away, or sorry, 6 trillion miles. So you'd have to take 6 trillion and times it by 4.4 light years, and you got 24 trillion miles away. That's the closest star. So we need to understand that. To me, that's 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 a, that's pretty far away. Um, if you, As I go over Genesis, think about everything I'm talking about here, okay? F find out if the Bible lines up with the scientific uh things that i'm talking about i think that's very important as a christian um the closest galaxy is 2.5 million light years away okay so that's actually 2.5 million times 6 trillion and that'll tell you how far how close the closest galaxy is away from us okay that is it to me that's another thing that's that's it's crazy compared to what the bible says about what the stars are made for what the moon sun and the stars are made for okay so we have that. Any questions on any of that stuff I went over so far, Brandon? No, dude, crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. Cool. So that way you guys know what science says, right? Um, now, what what science also has is a few different theories that, that came up. And I believe it's like a scientific trinity. And I believe it definitely opposes the Bible, no matter what anybody tells me. I do think it all opposes the Bible. First one would be the Big Bang Theory. Uh, came out from George Lamontre, a Belgian cosmologist, Catholic priest, Jesuit trained. Boom, red flag for me. As soon as I hear Jesuit, I'm like, all right, we studied the Jesuits. We studied the Freemasons. You guys probably already know about all this stuff. Bam, Jesuit trained. Cool. What's his deal? He says that 13.8 billion years ago, right, uh, an explosion happened. Now, I was in the military. I've watched explosions on, on, on videos. I have to watch that so I know. Then an explosion happens. If I see it, it can hit me. But I've seen stuff explode all the time, right? In, on these videos and, and, and in person, I see an IED, but never had to actually see it explode. But what happens? Destruction, right? Total destruction. No construction, right? Never see that. I never see something explode. I never see a library explode. And then shoo, gravity puts it all back together. And then the book comes back together and you can read it. You know what I mean? I don't see that. But that's something that that is opposing the Bible because they say that the stars came first, then the sun 4.6 billion years ago, then the earth 4.5 billion years ago. Okay, so that opposes the Bible. Besides the time frame, the order of creation also opposes the Bible. So as a Christian, just know if I was the devil I'm not going to serve you what Genesis says for sure. If I was the one that was the opposing God and I was, you know, they say the God of this world or the prince of, of the air and, and, and the deceptive one, I'm going to give you totally opposite of what the Bible says. I'm never going to want you to believe the Bible. I'm going to want you to believe my own uh, interpretation or my own creation. And that's pretty much what happens there. Next one would be evolution. And, uh, Charles Darwin, his grandfather is the one that, that came up with evolution, and he was a 33-degree Mason. His direct son was a preacher. He didn't, he didn't take that evolution and run with it, but Charles Darwin did. Now, I, never, I can't find a connection between Charles Darwin and Freemasonry when I look, so I will not say that he's a Mason. I just know that the, the idea came from a 33 
83 degree Mason, high level, boom, he gets taken to Charles Darwin. He takes it and runs with it. And what happens? His name becomes almost famous or eternal now because everybody says, you know, relates it to him, right? Charles Darwin, right? It's a, it's a form, I believe, of selling your soul. And now everybody, Charles Darwin, evolution, evolution. It, it's, it's pushed and banged down our throats as if it's fact. And so is the Big Bang Theory in school as if it is fact, not, not treated as a theory anymore. Now it's like it's fact. The third one would be the heliocentric model, right? From Copernicus, right? Uh, if you look up Copernicus, Freemason Lodge, CHP 246, he has a lodge. There's a Galileo Lodge in New York. There's the Isaac Newton Lodge as well. Every time I see these gentlemen, they have a, a, a compass in their, in their hand in most of their pictures. Not saying that 100% that they were Masons. I can't tell you because I wasn't alive back then in 1542 when this uh, Copernicus came out, the Copernican theory. But uh, he was also a priest, got put up to a bishop, almost became a bishop. Um, they say on his deathbed, he released this. But also, he was doing presentations on this 10 years before that. So he was trying to push it out. The Catholic Church wanted him to push it out because it actually changed the calendar. And, uh, and it, changed, it changed a lot of things. But um, that's one of the things. Also, um, uh, you know, it just gets interesting, man, when you study his stuff. He takes the sun, he puts it in the middle, and he says it's enthroned in a beautiful temple. Uh, and, and it illuminates the whole earth or the whole, uh, whatever universe, or whatever. It's the ruler of the universe. It's like Hermes. And, and, and if you think about heliocentric Helios is a Greek sun God. So we have a Helios Greek sun God centered solar system. Soul is also a sun God. So all these things are in the, in the, um, in the title, you know? So we, that's what they're teaching you. The same stuff that happened in Babylon, same thing that happened in Egypt, the same thing that happened in Greece, the same thing that happened in Rome, worship of the sun, worship of the planets, worship of the sky. And the Bible strictly tells you, do not worship the creation, worship the creator, right? The one that created all these things. It's basically the same thing put in a different gift bag and, and sold to the public. And we have to sit here and understand from a spiritual aspect that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities of evil. The Geneva Bible says worldly governors, right? Not just principalities of evil, but worldly governors were also opposing because I believe fallen angels are, are assisting these gentlemen. But so we get served this in school from the age of five, right on to, to, to college and you have, uh, it's about 13, 15, 16 years of indoctrination of what they want you to believe. And then you come out, get a job, become like everybody else. And then maybe you're 28, 30 years old, maybe 35 years old, and you start picking up the Bible and you start reading the book of Genesis. And what happens? You have all these opposing views and block walls put between you and the Bible before you even pick it up. Because it, everything that you've been taught your whole life and indoctrinated with, it's opposing the Bible from science to, to education, to school, to, you know, believe this, believe that, all these different things. So I just believe that these are God killers and they're block walls put between you and the Bible, or I believe you and the truth. And Satan is the one that's obviously manifesting this type of stuff and his demons and his fallen angels. That's my personal opinion. If you don't believe that, it's okay. <laughs> so I'm just presenting the evidence and no matter what, I love you. And no matter what, I'm here for you. And no matter what, I'll pray for you. And I'll help you my best. But that is all the science put in. I like to go over that first before I hit the Bible. Any questions on that? No, dude. Nailing it. You know, another interesting point about that uh, bit where we're hurling through space at this tremendous miles an hour, and we have been for so long, is the idea that the constellations have stayed the same for thousands of years and that the same... Uh, 12 zodiac signs have been the same in the exact same positions and look the same and referred to the same by thousands of thousands think about of years. That. Yeah. <laughs> think about that. It's interesting. That. All right. So now on the screen, we have ancient Hebrew conception of the universe. This is what the Bible will describe if you read it word for word and, and there's different, and, the, and you let scripture interpret scripture. Okay. So day one, it says, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens, Shemaim, and the Eret, which is the earth. Now, if you think about what earth means in Hebrew, earth means land. So earth can mean 
foundations. Earth can mean the land. Earth can mean the total earth. Okay, there's different wor words of, of, for a ret. So in the beginning, God created the heavens. The first heaven, ladies and gentlemen, would be where the moon, sun, and the stars are located. The second heaven, as it says in Genesis 1.8, God called the firmament heaven. So that's the second heaven. The third heaven, uh, it's going to be 2 uh, Corinthians verse 12, is Paul talking about going to the third heaven and hearing unspeakable things. The third heaven will be where God's throne is located. So biblically, we have three heavens. One is where the moon, sun, and the stars are. Second one is the firmament. Third is going to be where God's throne is. Now, I believe on day one, it says he created the heavens and the earth. Heavens, for me, would be where the moon, sun, and the stars are located, and also where God's throne is located. Now, also, he created light, right? That's that's day one. Day, and, he laid it, and it also says he created the earth. I believe he created the foundations of the earth right here because he actually says land. And it could be dirt. It could be land, right? No continents yet. That doesn't happen until day three. But uh, on day two, it said God created the firmament, which is here. That word is rakia. Uh, it's going to mean solid. It's going to be expanse. And then in parentheses, base support, supporting the waters above. Uh, and also we'll tell you in the Strong's Concordance that the Hebrews believed it was solid, supporting the waters above. Right? So there's waters above the firmament. It says he separated the waters from the waters. And, and he's not talking about the ocean because that's not mentioned until day three. So he says he separated waters from water. So there would still be water above the firmament. Now, now a lot of stuff that you're going to hear from me is going to be very similar to what flat earthers believe today, whether they're Christian or not. But I believe a lot of these ideas came, I believe, from the Bible. Other people would say other their ancient, um, you know, text. I say the Bible, right? So um, now you have the on day day three now. You have the oceans, the dry land, plants, and vegetation. The oceans would be the sea. And then the dry land is the continents coming up, right? So you got that now on day three. It wasn't until day four in the Bible, God created the moon, sun, and the stars also. And what God did was he placed those um, in the firmament. Okay, so it says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The two great lights would be the moon to rule the, uh, the night, the lesser light. And then we have the greater light to rule the day, which is the sun. Okay, and this, those are in the firmament, right? Inside the firmament. Um, and it says, and God, oh, and it says, to the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. So he created these lights to light up the earth, the sun, the moon, and the stars, right? To light up the earth. That's what the Bible's saying, showing you that you are specifically special and you guys are great. I created these for you guys to live on this earth, not to light up different galaxies or anything like that. It's for you. You're special. Great creation. And that's something that I think the Bible emphasizes. And I believe that this creation, the flat earth and everything and, and the biblical Hebrew cosmology emphasizes that Brandon, you're special. Tommy, Johnny, whoever, you're special and God loves you, right? So, um, and it says, and God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good in the evening, morning were the fourth day. So, you got science over here saying that 13.6 billion years ago, stars were formed. And then you have 4.6 billion years ago, the sun was formed. And then you have science saying that the earth was formed 4.5 billion years ago, right? You have the Bible immediately opposing science telling you, uh-uh, the earth was first. Then on the fourth day, the moon, sun, and the stars. The reason why science has to have the stars come first, you got the space backdrop, right? We got the stars first. Those are amazing, right? And then you have the sun. So the sun is supposed to be the the, the gigantic ball of, of gases and everything, right? And it's gigantic. And then if the earth forms, what's going to happen? The earth is going to form and this gigantic sun enthroned in this temple is going to, it's going to automatically start to orbit the sun because the Tony and grav gravity and all that stuff they tell you about, right? So that's what they say. And that is called naturalism. There's no need for God if everything formed by itself, 
right? But God is telling you, I spoke the word and created, right? So both of them, no matter what people think, are faith-based, <laughs> okay? Definitely both of them are faith-based. Science just has to admit it's faith-based and not fact. Any questions on anything I went over so far, brother? You know, it's interesting because uh, as you're talking about this, I'm thinking of what an architect of a simulation would do, right? Like a digital simulation, you know, and from our appearance, of course, we would perceive it that way. But this is how you would sort of determine a realm, determine its functions, determine how it's going to be lit, how the conditions will be in an enclosed environment, even so much as to encase it in sort of water, which makes me think of a submerged uh, PCU or something like that, you know, a submerged computer that needs that sort of coolant to operate. And then it's interesting mm, again to say with a word, meaning like maybe with a casted algorithm or hitting enter on a keyboard, all of a sudden, all of the things put in place by the simulated architect. And again, there's, I think we're at an interesting time right now, Asimov sort of indistinguishability between spirituality and science, right? And so I think at the quantum level, we're getting to this point where we can explain an architecture type of a system of algorithms that would then enable a, a functional reality in which then the participants could experience perhaps report back and in whatever mechanism right and so if you look at it that way then one could then say well all the magic as some folks would call it spirituality or anything else is actually being reflected in these concepts now and that science has actually matured its position on the ability to see these things if not using different words they're still describing exact same concepts so as you're describing this and we're looking at this, man, you're talking about in my one lens that we can look at this through is an architect designing a simulation in which things would function and all the conditions and then having external conditions in which to monitor. It's just really interesting, yeah. man. Yeah. And, and God also, he created the plants vegetation day three. If people try to extend the time, then, you know, the sun would not be created yet. So the plants and vegetation need the sun photosynthesis, right? So it, it looks like it's day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, just like any Hebrew expert would tell you those, these are actual literal days. Okay. Not, and it also says the morning and the, and the, and the, and the, the night and the morning were the first day. So we need to understand that and also understand that what was the earth orbiting around on day three, if it came first in, in, a, in a heliocentricity, right? God is basically showing you how he created it. And I have verses to align with what I'm speaking about, right? That the earth is fixed and immovable and that the moon, sun, and the stars are in the firmament, right? So we have, here's some fixed verses, Zechariah 1 verse 11. It says, and they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, we have walked to and fro through the earth and behold, all the earth sitteth still it is at rest. Uh, First Chronicles 1630 says he has fixed the earth firm and immovable. Psalms 93 1, that was fixed the earth immovable and firm. Psalms 96 10, he has fixed the earth firm and immovable. Uh, and then we have Psalms 104 5, who laid the foundations of the earth, which these are the foundations, uh, so it should not be moved forever. All right. So I just want to show you that. And then Isaiah 45 18. Who made the earth and fastened it himself and fixed it fast? Okay, so we have those. So just so you guys know that. So we have a fixed and immovable earth, not spinning, not orbiting, not rotating, not chasing the sun at 525,000 miles an hour. We have a fixed earth and the heavens are what are moving, the moon, sun, and the stars. Okay, now what about that word firm? Like I talked about firmament uh, in Proverbs 8.27, when he established the heavens I wisdom was there and he drew a circle. If you look at down, if you look at a flat earth, it's a circle. And on the outside is Antarctica, right? This is just the perception. And what it's called here in the Hebrews is the foundations of heaven. So Antarctica would be holding up the waters above and holding up the firmament, right? And there's verses I'll go over to show you that. But it says he drew a circle upon the face of the deep when he made firm the skies above. Firm means, if you look up that word in Strong's Concordance, it means firm, strong, solid. So the sky is solid. When the fountains of the springs of deep became fixed and strong, when he set the sea, its boundaries, so that the waters would not transgress, the boundaries set by his command when he marked out the foundations of the earth. So the waters cannot transgress because the oceans 
in our perception of the flat earth has something called an ice wall. So, you know, Dave Weiss has gone over this on your show. I'm sure you understand what I'm speaking about here. But the Bible is also describing that the oceans cannot transgress. So the oceans would be hitting what we call ice wall. And we have the firmament connecting to that. Personally, that's what I believe. Um, you don't have to believe that. But these verses are pretty interesting. Um, now, I did tell you guys that the moon, sun are moving, not the earth. Uh, I'll give you guys some verses that back up what I'm talking about there. Uh, Joshua 10, uh, verses 12, it says, Then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. He said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still, thou uh, upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajan, and the sun stood still. And the moon stayed until the people have avenged their enemies upon their uh, spend them, uh, avenge themselves upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Jasher that the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and has not uh, gone down a full day? If you look at the word gone down, or if you look at the word ariseth, uh, what it is is gone, it's it's come forth or go away. So basically, or it's uh, come forth and gone forth, you know? So it's like the earth or the uh, the sun is not going down, but right there you see that that Joshua, the point of that verse is that the sun and the moon stopped in two geographical locations uh, it, biblically is what happened. And if you look at what that would uh, do in the scientific model, they said that if the earth, the earth would have to stand still, the, the sun would have to stop moving 525,000 miles an hour. So the, the earth would have to stop moving 66,000 miles an hour. The moon would have to stop moving uh, 1,800 miles, or what is it, 2,200 miles an hour. So we have all these things that would have to happen for the sun and moon to stop in two geographical locations. Can God do miracles? Of course he can. But the Bible doesn't say the earth stood still. What it says is that the sun and the moon stood still in two geographical locations, which makes sense on the model that I'm coming out with right here, showing you the ancient Hebrew conception, but on the heliocentric model does not make sense. Okay. Um, now we need two witnesses in the Bible. We have Habakkuk 311. It says the sun and moon stood still in their habitation at the end, at the light of thine arrows, they went and the shining of thy glittering spear. So Habakkuk is speaking about this event because it actually says, if you keep reading Joshua, that this event would never happen again. So it talks about the sun and the moon stopping, right, from moving and not the earth. Any questions on that, Brandon? No, just interesting. It, it, it's like the, the thing I keep thinking about here is people that are listening to this for the first time are just aren't grasping. If First of all, guys, check the uh, link in the show description. If you haven't already, there's amazing visuals associated with this. Uh, but when I'm, when I'm looking at this, what I'm thinking about is that meme, right? And it's a gif, right? It just keeps going over and over, but it's a horse. And you look at the horse and his legs are all erratic. And it, and it reads on the bottom something to the effect of if you're right brain, the horse will be running right or backwards. If you're left brain, the horse will be moving forwards. Also, this happens with like a train car and a subway and everything, and it's moving in erratic directions. And when you focus on it and think about it going one way, then it runs that way. Now, what's fascinating about this is when you look at celestial mechanics from the, let's say, globe model, a heliocentric model, right? Then you're, you're standing here and you're seeing things spin around you or you around things. But whenever you're looking at it the other way, the things are spinning around you. Mm -hmm. And so in this way, you're making the horse run backwards. You're making the train car go the other way. And now it's something that you see it in that and you can't unsee it. Because even as the firmament, like you're talking about, if it's rotating around us in some awesome fluid bubble-like thing that we may be suspended in some sort of liquid or water, which is fascinating that the oceans are different than waters. And so maybe there's something there. Um, but then also that they're kind of stuck to the firmament, right? And that they just move with the piece of glass or edge or wall or whatever that's moving as well. Like this perspective blows your mind. It's sort of disorienting. Did you find it to be so? Did you get like a little uh, nauseous? I believe that this that the firmament is solid and doesn't move and that the moon, sun, and the stars move inside the firmament. That's my personal belief, but okay. there's different beliefs on this. There's, there's also, you know, when you look at a star through a telescope, you're also gonna see it, it looking like it's in water and it looks like there's, you know, people would say frequencies or it looks like it's singing or doing something of the sort. And, and people might go, oh, you're crazy. You're nuts. Uh, I've seen them in, through NASA telescopes. And that's that's different. You need to understand that uh, amateur astronomers or some astronomers or something like that looking uh, raw footage 
It's a lot different than taking a footage and, 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 and putting a footage over a footage over a footage over a footage and then making it look perfect like they want you to look. And then an artist rendition, making it CGI and then giving it to you on, and, you know, in a nice gift package. And you're like, that star looks amazing. That's not really what it looks like if from a raw uh, video or raw footage. Just to let you guys know. It's the um, most interesting yeah. thing. The more you look at it yourself, the more it doesn't mm -hmm. match the official story. That's all. Yes, and then that's exactly. your right. You give like me a telescope everything. to look at the store. Like everything. <laughs> like everything else that we, that, that me and Brandon study like crazy, you know, we're researchers, man. And, and, and like every single thing that's served to us, you're finding underlining evil, satanic, Luciferian stuff in my end. That's what I believe. Other dude. people would believe it's just evil, but I believe, dude, you see it, man. You can even just look at it. You just go to Washington, D.C. Oh, I'm going to go visit Washington, D.C. This is so beautiful. And then, you know, your conspiracy theorist and the first <laughs> thing you see, a giant phallus. What the? Oh, a shit. A phallus? <laughs> I know also about Egyptian that. Egyptian in nature. Okay. What's going on? How tall is that thing? Oh, it's 6,666 <laughs> inches tall. What? Oh. How wide is it? Oh, it's 66.6 6, uh, inches wide. How many sides are there? Three. Uh, six, six, six. Uh, what, where's the Bible at? Oh, it's actually in the balls of it. It's on the very bottom of the phallus. What? <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, you, you're like, people that are conspiracy theorists see that and just go, are you kidding me? Like, we see that they're not worshiping the God of the Bible like, like we used to think. You know, the government's all Protestant Christians. Look at those guys. They're, they're worshiping God. Yes, but dude, come on, guys. So anyways, that's just an example. Everything has an underlying evil Satan imagery that we just don't see as normal individuals that are just sheep following everything. Oh, I like the Bible, but at the same time, I love Fox News and I like this and I like, and they just, they're just focused on stuff that they don't see the hidden that's going on. And, and you have to dig deep, research me. I researched the Bible and God, he's, I believe God, uh, Holy Spirit inspired, uh, shows certain things to me for me to uh, be able to, I think, represent, you know, his word. That's what I'm here for. But to show people that this world is not, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities of evil every single day. Right. So that's just an example. But <clears throat> another thing with the, I'll go back to the presentation. Also, it says the sun went backwards 10 degrees. So a on the sundial. All right. This is Isaiah 38 verses seven through eight. And this is the sign to you from the Lord. And the Lord will do this thing, which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow of the sundial, which has gone down or gone away from with the sun on the sundial of it has 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees on the dial, which it had gone down. Sundial. What does Dave Weiss talk about? And, and look at his app. You know, Sky the moon, Clark. sun and the, yeah, is his app. And shout out to, to that gentleman. He's he's not Christian yet, but I think he's he's believing in a creator and he's getting closer. And I love that gentleman. But I, I like to shout out that, you know, so you guys understand. The Flat Earth, Moon, Sun, and Zodiac app. Check that out. Uh, I don't get paid to say that. I just want to tell you guys, he, he he's definitely an awesome individual and he's putting out some good stuff. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to check that out. Respect. Um, and, shout outs where shout outs are deserved, dude. Good call. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, now, so I have that. I have the sundial moving back 10 degrees. I got the moon, sun, and the star stopping. Now we know that those are what's moving and we're fixed and immovable so far. Uh, the, there's also verses about the moon being a light. The sun is a light. I told you guys that in Genesis 14 uh, through 19, 1, 14 through 19, it says, God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, lesser light to rule the night. So the lesser light is the moon. The greater light is the sun. Um, Psalms 136, uh, 7 through 9 also talks about the moon being a light. Ezekiel 32, 7, I will cover the heaven, make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with the cloud and the moon shall not give her light. Uh, in Mark also, we have Jesus saying that the, that the, that the moon will not give her light. Okay, we have that. So I believe, like the Bible, that the lesser light is the moon, the greater light is the sun, and I do understand uh, scientifically, flat earthers go and they they test the shade of the moon is uh, is actually warmer than the shade of the moon, uh, or the the actual light from the moon. So yeah. the light is supposedly colder, so it's actually it seems like it's putting out a cold light. Yeah. Now that's a, that's an experiment they do, and I think that's interesting. Um, you know, so. That's something I believe. I believe the moon is a light. Now everyone, will, okay, now what has an eclipse? How does that work? How does this work? How does that? That's the questions that I get from people. And it's like, I, I try to, I'm a biblical cosmologist. All I do is read you the word. If there was anything I found in scripture that told you how that, that, that occurred, I would be able to tell you that. 
but I don't know. And I have, have no you seen telling you that? <laughs> have you seen the video of the guy doing the concave mirror with the moon, where it concaves in, sort of like a dish that bends in, like you could fill it with water, but then it has all the moon mares and things on it, but really they're removed. So it's a frosted glass where we would call land on the moon, and then the mares or the darker spots was just clear, so it would reflect the behind it, like what we see during the day with the damn moon, where it's blue behind rather than yeah. black, right? So That's what he crazy, did was yeah. he took this dish. I'll find the video. We'll do it in the afterthought. Please. Uh, please. He took this dish and he dipped it in water. And as it went, maybe and dipped within the waters oh, above. Oh yeah, okay. Maybe I have it seen this. Surfs in and out of the waters yeah. above in a way, and yeah. that's how it gives this like cycle, which also maybe just clock in nature. Yeah, and some people like uh, some people would say like electromagnetism and different stuff. You know what I mean? And that's just them speculating and, and fascinating. And I have Either no way. problem with that, you know. But that is fascinating, and it is fascinating. And I always tell people in my work, they always laugh because I'm like, look at the moon. The sun is right there. The moon is right there. It's not Dude, the full, moon is, is it? silly as fuck. <laughs> have you met Crow Triple yeah. Seven yet? Have you guys talked? I, I haven't met him yet, but I think it would be awesome to get together because I think I would go over this and he can go over the scientific and we would have a great show, you know. But I haven't I haven't met him yet. But if you want to introduce me at some point, it would be amazing, man. I'll send Definitely. an email to Rose. She's great. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so we have that now, guys. We have the moon being a light, the sun being a light, right? And who's it created for? Us, right? God created it for us. You're special. You're not uh, evolution. You're not Big Bang. You are special, okay? We have that. Now, if you go to uh, the CJB, which is the complete Jewish Bible, and you read the book of Genesis, here's what it says about the firmament. Let there be a dome in the middle of the water. Guys, look at the screen. If you guys are watching on YouTube or whatever, that is the dome. And it says, God made the dome and divided the water from under the dome, from the water above the dome, the water under the dome would be, or above the dome would be here. The water under the dome, which ended up being, uh, becoming the oceans is down here. Uh, and it says, and that was above the dome and it, it was, and it was, and God called the dome sky. So in this one, when he's not saying heaven, but in all the other verses uh, that you go through, like any, like King James, or any of them, it says, God called the firmament heaven. So we need to understand that. Right. So, I just want to show you guys that. Um, and so firmament, uh, I'd have to go. I already kind of explained what the firmament was. I think I've already gone over that. What the Strong's Concordance says about the firmament. The Greek word is called stereoma. It also means solid in nature. So we have that. The root word is raka, which is to spread out, beat out. So God created the firmament, right? And I think that's really interesting. And uh, what people need to understand is that in Psalms 19.1, it's it's the one that's on uh, yeah, Vornerbaum von Braun's tombstone, is the heaven declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork, right? So that is called handiwork. If you look up that word in the Strong's Concordance, it means achievement. So it's God's achievement. So the firmament, beaten out, raka, spread out, stereoma, solid firmament, solid firmament. That's why it's called firm, right? That doesn't mean a softament. It's firmament, right? <laughs> All right. And, and it's also called the dome in the CJB, which they are trying to stick with the Hebrew as much as they can to show you guys and express what Moses is talking about here. Yes, a firmament, guys. And I know I keep uh, beating on that, but yeah. So even if you look at uh, that word raka, it's in Job 37, 18. It says, hast thou him spread, which is raka, out the sky, which is strong as a molten looking glass. Understand that, all right? The Tower of Babel wouldn't have made sense in a heliocentric uh, globe. They don't. That wouldn't have made sense because God would have said, Nimrod, enjoy not being able to breathe when you get up there. No problem. <laughs> just build it as high as you want. You're just going to pass out when you get to this point. But if you have a tower of Babel going up to the heavens, he wanted to murder God. And he wanted to, I believe, uh, you know, this is not, this is my speculation. I believe he wanted to start creating the Nephilim again and find those angels, fallen angels, and just try to, you know, it was a lot of evil going on there. And they built the tower. They tried to get to the heavens. Now, I don't believe you can get through this unpenetrable firmament, but he sure was trying. And in, uh, you know, so we have that. So just want to let you guys know that. And you have um, like Operation Fishbowl and stuff in the 50s. They were trying the shit out of blowing the damn thing yes. up. They had reports and what were they of using? different heights. A Thor missile, right? Yeah. So it's Thor's hammer trying to break through the fixed shell 
belonging to the Lord, which, which is what Dominique means. Which yeah, is the which main that <laughs> Thor in uh, Asgard mythology is one that created the Middle Earth and, and the lower Earth, right? The lesser Earth, the matter where we are. That's, <laughs> That's fascinating. So it is. And, and it, they just basically take a middle finger and give it to the Lord and say, hey, we're going to do whatever we can to be like Nimrod again. We're trying to come for you and they're trying to do their best. And, you know, you see you see this stuff unfolding in 1962, since you mentioned it now, Operation Fishbowl. The main one was called Operation Dominique Chama. Dominique being belonging to the Lord in Latin. Chama mean fixed shell. And then it became Operation Dominique, which is belonging to the Lord. You have a fishbowl. Tell me this does not look like a fishbowl right here, Dude, bro. It does. And, it does. And what, what does a fishbowl have on the very top? A hole. a hole. So what are they trying to do? Take a missile and blow up the firmament. Also, here's another thing. If you were Russia and you're United States and you need to shoot a missile from here over to the United States, what do you need to know? How high the firmament is or else you're going to blow a rocket here or a nuke, whatever they try to say they have. We know you probably studied those before too. Boom. And it's going to explode instead of them being able to shoot it and hit it over here. So they need to know the height of the firmament. Also, they need to know the height of the firmament when they start doing these uh, rocket launches into space, supposedly, where they're like just doing an arc like a dome, which is interesting. Uh, and it seems like they're just going into the water. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, so there's a few things to that operation that we need to understand. Now what? 1958, what do we have? Oh, my goodness. 1958, we have uh, Operation High Jump, Admiral Byrd. What's going on there? It's 1956 to 1958. Where is he going to search? None other than the fountains of heaven are the foundations of heaven or what you would call Antarctica that goes around the circle of the earth. Now, what do we have? I think he found the dome, which was put in the encyclopedia in 1958. They found a dome at 13,487 feet, something of the sort. Yes. And then the, immediately the next year, it's taken out. Immediately, his Freemason brother, that's a senator, pushes the Antarctic Treaty, pushes in front of the government. The government's like, well, yes, let's do it. Every other government that's signed let's do it let's all save the penguins okay cool let's do it bro let's save the penguins and only send scientists and military out there and that's it everybody that comes you can go ahead and visit this little land right here in antarctica and that's no problem anybody that comes can visit this land but i believe what they did is they took this journal and put it out of him actually going in into the hollow earth that turns into a whole different perception than biblically a uh, flat earth and i do believe that uh you know speculation but i believe he maybe found the dome he said there's land that's actually as big as the united states past antarctica who knows man a lot of interesting stuff but 1958 1962 they have uh operation fishbowl dominic and then they have nasa then they have the moon landing then they ha it just keeps going dude and all that stuff is going on while warner von braun is 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 with um you know stanley kubrick along with Disney, uh, Walt Disney, 33 Degree Mason. We got uh, Saturn, Brotherhood of Saturnalia from Germany, uh, paper, uh, Operation uh, Paperclip, meeting with the 33 Degree Mason, Walt Disney, who makes what? Animation, dude. He, he specializes in it. Then we have a director, Stanley Kubrick. He's also in the mix. What does he make? Movies. So what are we trying to make here? A movie for the public to think we're traveling, doing space travel, selling us on the globe, right? And those are all, when you get 33 degree Mason together and you get uh, Brotherhood of Saturnalia, I would believe Germany, that's their, their secret society. You get them all together. They're here to serve the public. And what was, what was Hitler doing? He was asking, he was, he was scaring the public with UFOs and, and certain things in the sky. And then now we have this guy coming over that makes rockets, Saturn V, what is that? Saturn worship? That's exactly what it is. And uh, yeah, so everybody needs to understand, Do you could do your research on that. But when this gentleman died at the age of 65, what does he put on his tombstone? None other than Psalms 19.1, for the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. He knows what's going on here, guys. He knew. And he also, they said he converted to Christianity. Who knows if he did? That could be a lie. I don't know. But maybe he left you a breadcrumb because what I want to read for you really quick is what Psalms 19, 1 verses 1 through 6 actually says. And I think it's very important, dude, because it's actually talking about how the, the sun is circuiting, making a circuit around the heaven, which is this is the heaven, first heaven, right? Um, so let me show you. 
The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter his speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. And in, 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 in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. If you look up the word tabernacle, it means tent. Back then, the tents were shaped like a dome. I believe that the tabernacle he's speaking of here, David is talking about the dome, which he was he believed in in, in the same Hebrew cosmology I'm talking about. So it says, um, and there, he said, a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man uh, to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven, the first heaven, right, to the end of heaven. Uh, his going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there's nothing hid from the heat thereof. A circuit is, 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 if you look up that word, it means circle or compass, but circle, right? So the, the moon and the, I mean, the sun is moving in a circuit around the heaven. Or if you look at the, the, the flat earth app, you could see the sun moving in a circle or a circuit. So look that up and you could see that the flat earth, matches what the Bible is saying, you know, and, and I think people need to understand that. But that is so interesting, bro, you brought up, because that just opens up another can of worms for me to just go into and show you guys, like, there's a lot of events that happened during that time. And in 1920, they already had a globe already on the screen for Universal that happens to look exactly like the globe that they supposedly found, <laughs> you know, from space. So It's so interesting. God, you're fascinating, Josh. I love this, man. Um. Yes, and uh, to the uh, Admiral Bird thing, yes, it's interesting because it does, again, presuppose. Now, uh, this is something that I've really been pointing out over the past couple of years is these not not getting too excited about these ideas because they're presented fantastically, right? And even I say this in contact cases, anybody being presented with something extra fantastical, Archangel so-and-so is hanging out in your house. Like, don't, you know, put on pause the amazingness of the information you're getting and really question it. Like, really just take a critical little glance at it real quick. Even go down it, have fun. But all the while, put in your pocket maybe that something is presupposing something larger that's deterring you from a bigger picture process here, right? So again, the idea that the moon landings, I love this, by the way. So the first that um, that we went at all, conjecture, and then also all, the, all of the ancillary sort of... Uh, conspiracy surrounding it, right? That's wonderful. But what it cons conspiratorializes is then it, you incorporate things like on another level uh, into the you know early parts of this research, you hear a quote from um, Neil Armstrong, right? That, oh, they're here, they're large, they're on the crater and they're watching us. Well, what that means in that, right? You can extrapolate, oh, they're aliens, right? Or they're whatever and they're, that proves that aliens, which is that's why they faked it, guys. So you can see why, yeah. of course, NASA would fake it because we can't know that yet. You know, we're just too fragile. But again, this presupposes the moon is a place you can go. So does yeah. the idea of a hollow earth or something like this. Now, I'm not necessarily... Uh, opposed well, to anything but i also think that the idea that he went there through yeah because of the shoal idea like this now, under chambers of earth and maybe that's what could be misconstrued and flat i we just mixed it together in one episode we got right. shield in the earth and we have flat earth with the dome so we can mix it up but go ahead Sorry. i completely agree and then what it presupposes <laughs> bird story specifically isn't that there's not a hollow caverns or a place where you can enter into what we call earth but that they're located at poles of a of a globe earth right so there's the presupposition yes. again it puts us on a ball same thing with these additional apollo missions that allegedly came out right 18 19 and 20 oh they're secret apollo uh, right it, apollo again right uh and so this Artemis. then and, and the Artemis, right? Apollo's uh, daughter, right? Which is just the next rollout of this program. So same thing, dude. We're smelling what you're stepping in on all levels here. This makes the most sense. And it is fascinating just to tie it into observations of your reality versus an obvious perception management campaign on all angles. So why wouldn't space yeah. be within that, dude? They're, they're limiting you and uh, I'm going to just say limiting again. They're limiting the shit out of you or attempting to. But that's what Josh and I are talking about here is ways to empower yourselves through just seeing things differently. But it's fascinating, focus, Josh. You wonderful work, dude. They focus the new age and they focus people on aliens coming from outer space. But if you look at Ephesians 6, 12, what is it saying? It's saying that these principalities of evil come from heavenly places, heaven being where the moon sun and the stars are located so when we wrestle not against flesh and blood but principalities of evil what does that mean we're, we're not fighting against aliens we're fighting against fallen angels 
and demons, it's demonic. And you can see Aleister Crowley saying that we're going to mistake aliens for demons one day. Look what's happening now. They're selling it to you in a giant package deal so that at one point they can use it against the public and then people will be running scared. No faith in God anymore. There's aliens. The Bible doesn't speak of this. But it really, dude, they're just trying to introduce you to aliens or what I would say are fallen angels, which they are already currently working with now. And, and that's why everything is the way it is right now. Satan is ruling this world, even though God is in control of everything at this moment, it's a fallen world. And he's the one that's pulling the strings behind the scenes. And you see it happening. I mean, come on, bro. Look at how in your face it is now compared to before. We got rappers uh, giving lap dances to Satan on TV with kids watching going, oh, that's cool. Gay is great. Now, I'm not saying gay is bad. I'm not trying to make be okay. Biblically, it is, but I'm not trying to uh, pounce on anybody. But you see what I mean, right? You see somebody that's lap dancing Satan on a on a vi music video now. It's right in our faces, right? I'm going to be and, honest. Um, minus some of the belief implications that come with some of the verbiage you use, I disagree zero percent. You and I have yeah. so much to talk about about this, and we're, we're going to go into the afterthought after your presentation here. So if you guys want to catch that, uh, check out yeah. how to do so in the link below. You have you and I have so much to talk about this. I'm reading this book Exo Vaticana <laughs> yeah. right now by Thomas Putnam um, or uh, wow. Chris Putnam and Thomas Horn. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. Okay. I, I know okay. Thomas Horn is, and, and I know Chris Butman is, but I haven't read the actual book. Though. Dude, we've got so much to talk about it with exactly what you're <laughs> talking about, because I don't disagree in one way. And we're going to, yeah. we're going to, we just got so much to talk about, but please continue. All right. Now, God, the Father, is called the Most High. Why is he called the Most High? Well, he's called the Most High because he's at the highest part of creation. Everything else is below him. Isaiah 14, 13 through 15 says, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. Heaven being the heavens of heavens, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God because God is located up on the most high above the stars, right? This is what Satan is saying. I will also sit on the Mount of Congregation on the farthest sides of the north. If you have a flat earth with a dome, where would God's throne be located? In the center. And what would be down below? The north. So we got to understand that I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, not above the most high, because there's no way you could be above him, but he wants to be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to shield to the lowest depths of the pits. Understand that, guys. So that whole verse right there is explained with everything I'm showing on the screen. If you try to take science and say, okay, well, let me take the Bible and put it to science. So we have a firmament, right? Okay, the firmament's solid. Where is it located? Well, it's located outside of every single galaxy in our universe. Cool. So God is how far away? Uh, he's about 66 trillion light years away. Oh, sounds good. So he's way out here. And we have an ever-expanding universe. So we have this little speck of dust that we we're supposed to be the earth orbiting the sun. And God's throne is further and further and further and further away in that model because he's ever-expanding. But in this model, God is not far away. Right. It even says, if you read Isaiah 40, verses 21 and 22, have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understand from the foundations of the earth? It is he, the Lord God, who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. How does he sit upon the circle of the earth? Well, we have a firmament connected to the earth and he is sitting above the waters. So he's actually literally sitting above the circle of the earth. And what does it say? And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. All of us like grasshoppers. He's watching us who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent, which was spoken about in Psalms 19 verses two through six to dwell in the tent being a firmament. And that's what the way that, that they used to look back in the day, the tabernacle was shaped like a dome, okay, to dwell in. Listen to that verse. Circle, for example, if you look up that word, it means circle. You can look it up in the Strong's Concordance, the lexicon, the Hebrew lexicon. It means circle, okay? So it doesn't mean sphere. He has a word he could have used for ball, Isaiah used in 22 verses 18, just to tell you guys, he says, toss thee like a ball into a large country. So he has a word for that. He chooses to use circle. When they translated it in the, in the um, Septuagint, 
from Greek or from Hebrew to Greek, they use the word uh, circle as well. Instead of using the word sphero, which they are spira, which they could have used sphere. No circle because they knew what the Hebrew was saying and they knew exactly. Now, if you think he's sitting on the outside of the universes, read this verse, Isaiah 66, one, and it'll tell you exactly where he is sitting. It says, thus saith the Lord, heaven is my throne. Look up here. That's the heavens in his throne. And the earth is my footstool. So the earth is what he's sitting over the earth, not the universes. Understand that. Okay. And uh, how do I know this? I, I let scripture interpret scripture. I go to Amos 9, 6. This is the NASB 2020. The CJB will also put it as vaulted dome. But listen to this. It says the one who builds his upper chambers in the heavens, which this is talking about the most high, the upper chambers of heavens has founded his vaulted dome over the earth, he who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth, the Lord is his name. That vaulted dome word right there can mean firmament of heaven, and it can also mean binding heaven to the earth. What is binding heaven to the earth? It is called a vaulted dome, which is a firmament that is connected to the earth, okay? This is, I'm just explaining to you guys word for word what the Bible says. You know, if you're opposing this view, just take your preconceived biases and understand. I'm just reading what the Strong's Concordance says about vaulted dome. I'm just explaining to you, just like if I'm talking about salvation, I'm talking about creation here. And understand that this is fascinating stuff. And it's it's amazing that God created everything for us, right? So we have that. Um all right. And then people sit, people try to tell us about the firmament being a canopy that was holding back the waters before the flood. And what they say is that the um that the that the canopy broke and then that's what flooded the earth. But we they forgot to mention that the moon, sun, and the stars are in the firmament. That canopy would have to be outside of all the heavens, right? Uh, or outside of uh, you know, the the universe or whatever the heck you want to call it. But also uh, if you look at Psalms 148, David actually talks about the waters still being above in the heavens. Okay. So that's after the flood. We need to understand that. Okay. So um, now also in uh, Ezekiel 126, all right, this is going to show you that God is above the firmament because it says, uh, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was a likeness as an appearance of a man above upon it. Now, Ezekiel, this is a vision. But what does it say in Numbers 12 verses 4 through 8? God comes to his prophets in visions and dreams. So who is giving Ezekiel this vision? God is. God is not going to lie. God is showing Ezekiel that above the firmament is his throne. That's what it's talking about here. All right. Um, and this is also, everyone gets interesting about the wheel within a wheel taking Ezekiel up. This is, uh, this is that, that section where it's talking about this stuff. All right. So everyone gets so fascinated on the UFO and all that stuff. They don't get fat, asphyxiated on what God is describing here about his throne and where it's located. I think it gets, you know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find out what, what's going on with God, what's in heaven. And that wheel within a wheel is interesting too, uh, Brandon, because if you look at what a star looks like, it definitely looks like a wheel within a wheel. A a amateur astronomer looking at it. What do you think? That a Brandon? dog's running around in. Yeah, absolutely. It's a wheel within yeah, a, a wheel. A the dog is planet. towering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's important to point out too. I love uh, you, bro. I love you, bro. Love That's you so back. Funny. <laughs> it's important as well to note uh, that Darwin, you know, had his dog, that beagle, of course, right? That famous association <laughs> with that uh, man's best friend. You know, it's interesting. Shout out to Fittest Flat Earth, and when you listen to this, you're gonna be Shout like, out, dude. Thank you. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, bro. Love it. Uh, Ezekiel ten one also says, "Then I looked, and behold, the firmament." That was above the head of the cherubims there appeared over them was the sapphire stone as the appearance and likeness of a throne. So what do we have, guys? We have all scripture interpreting scripture. We have a firmament, a vaulted dome, what's what binds heaven to the earth and what's above it? God's throne. Now, if you were God and you don't want anybody to physically be able to make it to heaven or into the heavens, what would you put? A vaulted dome that's solid 
unpenetratable by any human being to never be able to get into heaven. The only way you get into heaven is when you die, the angels come and get you and your spirit, which is able to walk through walls. That's what's talked about with when Jesus came back, he could, he doesn't need to open the door. He walks through it. So now your spirit can make it through the firmament and go to heaven or your spirit can make it through the earth and go to Sheol. And uh, if you read the Bible, uh, there's actually talks about something called Abraham's bosom, which is in the earth. It's a story of Lazarus and the rich man. And it talks about one side being paradise, one side being Sheol. And you have all five senses. You're able to taste. You're able to, to want water, to thirst. You're able to speak. You're able to feel because it says he feels fire under his feet. So just to let you guys know, now, I'm not trying to Bible bash or tell you anything like that, but it's really interesting when you hear what the Bible says about what's in the earth compared to what scientists say. It's just magma. It's just fire or whatever. It's similar to what Bible would say about, you know, like the lake of fire, but it's just interesting, man. Just when you think about the whole thing, um, everything is opposing the Bible and the Bible, I believe is my foundation. And I believe it's true. Um, but, uh, and anybody that's out there, that's a Christian that's hearing this for the first time. I'm not trying to deceive you in any way, man. I'm literally just reading the Bible word for word. I go back to the Strong's concordance, just like anybody would. Now, the only Bible that speaks about what the heliocentric uh, model would be, would be the Book of Mormon, which I don't believe in. I do believe Joseph Smith, he was a, a, a Freemason, 33-degree uh, Mason. And what he says in Helaman 1215, if you guys look it up, it says that the sun stands still and the earth moves around the sun. Okay, that's the only Bible that you're going to find out that, that actually correlates with the stuff we're being served today. And, and that is supposed to, in the Mormon religion, is supposed to supersede what the Bible says, as opposed to, you know, that's why I stick with the Bible. You guys need to understand that. That's the only Bible verse or supposed Bible that's going to go with the model they serve us. And what do we believe about that as Christians? You know, I don't want to talk bad about Mormons, but you guys understand that, uh, you know, we believe it's a false prophet that, that told you guys that. Um, so... Um, now, Revelation 4, 6, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass and a crystal in the midst of the throne and round about the throne. There was four beasts full of eyes and before. So it's saying that the throne uh, below the firmament was a sea of glass or below God. He's on a sea of glass. And uh, you're going to see rainbows in heaven, which has to be water. Also, you hear in the book of Revelation talk about thunder and watering sounds in the background. So there's water, it, excuse me, in the heavens. We need to understand that, right? So. Um, now, also in the Luke one twenty eight, we have uh, the the angel calling God the highest. Right, he's the highest. He's at the highest point of creation. We're getting really close here, bro, because uh, I know we're trying to fit this in. No, you're awesome. The hour, you're so. fir There's no hurry. You're great. Okay, so we have um, us. Oh, Second Corinthians 12 verses two through four. It's the one I mentioned earlier. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell or whether out of the body, I cannot tell God knoweth such one caught up to the third heaven, which is going to be here. Um, and, uh, and, or out of the body, I cannot tell God knoweth how it was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. So, if you have Paul getting caught up to the third heaven and Paul had to go through the moon, sun, the stars, uh, all these different galaxies and all this stuff to get to heaven, which was where God's throne to be located on this heliocentric model. You don't think he's going to mention that he had to travel trillions upon trillions of miles to get to heaven. All he says is this. I heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter men. I guarantee you that Paul would probably write a few different books about what he saw and what he had to go through and had he had to dodge this planet and all this different craziness. No, he just says it's unspeakable words that a man lawful to utter. And he also went up to heaven. Where, where's up? Up is here, right? Up to heaven. Uh, when you're a kid, what do you think? Heaven is up. Uh, where do you think hell is located? Down. What is what is up and down on a ball spinning and through space? We have no idea. So Paul would have to wait until it spins and orbits and then, oh, I can go up now because, uh, you know, where's he trying to go? He's trying to go up. Uh, Enoch in the Bible, where does he go? Up to heaven. Where does uh, Elijah go? Oh, he's on a chariot and he goes up to heaven. It's no problem. Jesus ascended up to heaven and he descended into the earth. What is up on the ball? 
spinning and rotating and orbiting and all that stuff. We don't know what up is. There's no up or down in space. So all that stuff doesn't make sense. Another thing we need to realize is in the Revelation, it says that God opened up the heaven like a scroll. This is called the firmament. He can open the heaven like a scroll. And who comes in? The man of the Bible, right? Not the man of the Bible, sorry. The most important uh a figure in the Bible, Jesus, right? Not saying he's a man, he's God. I didn't mean to say that. What I mean is the, I was going to say the man of the hour, right? <laughs> the, the most important figure in the Bible actually comes in on a cloud and all, every eye will see if it's flat with a dome and he opens up the firmament, roll back like a scroll and Jesus comes in on a cloud. It's no problem. Every eye will see. Well, there's satellites and there's phones. It says every eye will see. We're going to know when Jesus comes back. Just want to let you guys know that. Also in the Revelation, it says the stars are going to fall from heaven. And like fig tree, stars, supposedly bigger than our sun, all of them are going to fall to the earth. No, if you have a firmament and these are luminaries and all the stars fall to the earth, it's no problem in our model. In a heliocentric model, not going to work. Okay, just letting you guys know. And Jesus says this in, in, the, in Mark and also it spoke about in Revelation. In Mark, Jesus cannot lie. Talked about Titus 1-2. Jesus can't lie when he's on the earth. So what is he saying? The stars are going to fall from heaven. No problem on this model. Big problem in a heliocentric model. One star would be way bigger than the earth. How are they all going to fall to the earth? Think about that, gentlemen and ladies, right? Um, so we're good there. Uh, another thing I like to talk about uh, before we're going to end is the flood. Okay. Very interesting stuff. The flood. So in the Bible, there's three separate events that happen. The first one is the fountains of the great deep will be broken up. Water comes from below. If you have uh, Noah's little ark right here and the waters come from below, it's going to lift his ark up, isn't it? Yes, it's going to lift it up to safety. Water brings the ark up. So now he's above the land. And then you have water. It says the windows of heaven were open. So the firmament was open. Water starts filling this enclosure. That this is talk about in Enoch 89 and it fills up. And then we have it raining for 40 days and 40 nights. Three separate events happen there, ladies and gentlemen. How do I know that there's three separate events because if you keep reading and 150 days later, the windows of heaven were stopped. Or if you look up that word, it means closed. So the windows of heaven were closed. The fountains of the great deep were not broken anymore. And also it stopped raining for 40 days or, or, or stopped raining, right? So there's three separate events that happen. So all you got to do is fill this fishbowl with water, 15 cubits above the highest mountain in the whole earth is flooded. If you go into a heliocentric ball spinning, all this craziness, how is that going to flood the way that God is describing in the Bible? Doesn't sound pl plausible or anything. So, um, and also if the fountains of the great deep were broken, now it, the scientists do talk about Pangaea. This is just speculation where everything was connected at one time. Let's say the fountains of the great deep were broken and, and it did separate the continents. The water came up. That could have happened. I don't know. It's speculation, whatever. I, I've heard this interesting idea uh, from a flat earther about Pangea recently. Um, so I'll just introduce it here if you don't mind. That really, we do still have Pangea, but the water levels are so much higher now that it's filling it to higher regions. So really, mm, this place has always been Pangea, but during the last or a few floods ago or something, it just sort of flooded, but then didn't resettle all the way down. So we have the appearance of yeah. broken up continents when really they're just more of the mountain tops or islands, right? From an yeah. old Pangea. That's it's interesting. A that's interesting because if you look at the the below the ocean, you know, you're going to see that there's exactly. mountains and stuff. So, and flooded hey. civilizations like all over the damn place. Not that if they migrated out there as if they were built there and then flooded in, you know? Yes. So maybe and, like the waters didn't recede as far back the last yeah. time. So yeah, hey, and think about that, okay? And 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 also it makes sense on a globe or not a globe, I'm sorry. It makes sense on a flat earth with a dome that if the water's filled up, it's no problem. Other people like, you know, when they read the Bible and they try to filter the Bible through science would say, okay, so what it was probably just a local flood, uh, even though the Bible says all animals, all creation, all, all, all the whole time, you know, also it's talking about, um, it's talking about the whole earth. You know, I mean, it, it's like God's promise to not flood the whole earth. There's the promise is there because God promises not to flood the whole earth, not little local floods and stuff. So just let you guys know. But yeah, this is my presentation, bro. And I always like to end it um, with um, 
2 Thessalonians 2.11, right? It says, and for this cause, uh, God shall send them strong delusion that they believe a lie. Okay. So that's speaking of like the Antichrist. There's going to be strong delusion. We got to understand end times. There's going to be nothing but deceptions. Uh, if you look up the, the Genesis 3.13, what is the word that Satan does to Eve? Mm, it's beguiled. And if you click on that word beguiled, what do you see in the Strong's Concordance? NASA, N-A-S-A. Understand that, okay? Now, is that a coincidence? I don't know. Is it a coincidence that every single mission that they do and every single that they're sending off is either a, the name of a Greek god or something of the sort or the name of a, a, of a Roman god or something of the sort? I think that it's no coincidences there. You just read it. It's basically flipping God of the Bible off, which I believe is the one true God, right? And and then that's what's happening. It's Satan just saying, look at this. Look at all your people that are Christians, supposedly worshiping the stars, worshiping the heavens, worshiping NASA. You know, it happens. But this is uh, all the 666s six, six, that are that are in this heliocentric model uh, presented to you from science. I like to present this before we go. Every one mile is eight inches squared of curvature. So if you took eight divided by 12, one mile would be 0.66 of a foot. If you go 10 miles, it's 66.6 .6 feet. If you go 100 miles, it's 600 or 6,666 feet, right? We also have, we're orbiting the sun at 66,600 miles an hour. We have the Earth's circumference is 600 times six, times six nautical miles. Um, we're at a 90 degree angle, right? So if you take 90 and you subtract it from 23.4 Earth's axis, you get 66.6 .6 degrees. Isaac Newton came up with his theory of gravity, first started writing it in 1666. Uh, the force of gravity on Earth is 666 newtons. The speed of sound is 666 knots. Uh, the diameter of the moon is 6 times 6 times 60. The distance to the moon is 6 times 60 times 666. The Arctic and Antarctic celestial sphere is 66.6 .6 degrees north latitude, 66.6 .6 degrees south latitude, and the surface temperature of Uranus, not my anus, is negative six times six times six degrees. All right, understand that. And there's more. I just I just keep it for time constraint to that. And you guys need to understand that what's going on in Genesis 2:1. God says this: Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day. Ended his God ended his work, which he had done. He has rested on the seventh day and all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because it is he that rested all his work, which God hath created and made. It's all created by whom? By God. God is done. All right. He's done. It's finished for now. But in Revelation, what do you find? A new heaven, new earth. All right. We need to understand that. New heaven, new earth. Why? Why would he have to make a new heaven, new earth? Because God's heaven is connected by a vaulted dome or firmament and the earth. So new heaven, new earth, because it's connected. That's why. So understand that. And also flat earthers out there. I love you. I love you. Okay. I love you guys. Understand. Worship the creator, not the created. We get fixated and, and everything on flat earth. I present it from a biblical perspective because I believe it's God's creation. But we need to also understand, give props to the creator, the one who created this. I love all of you guys and I appreciate you. And Brandon, much love to you, bro, for having me on. And uh, yeah, that is my presentation in a nutshell. In a nutshell, bro. Thank you. Well, you absolutely nailed it, brother. We uh, could not be more grateful that you've uh, connected with us here. Could not be more grateful to Tyler. I mean, holy shit, dude. I mean, this is absolutely fascinating. And I, I'm going to invite you to give the last word here before we wrap. Um, but then also, I want to encourage folks to check the link below so you can sign up for Patreon, be a member of our value exchange audience, so you can take part in these afterthoughts, because you and I have a lot of stuff to talk about still here, if you have time, brother. So I want to just, uh, again, give you the final word, remind everybody that all the ways to find you are going to be located down in the show description. And thank you profusely, dude, for, for this. This was outstanding. Uh, so, Josh, Thank please, you, man, leave us with uh, some your words of hope. We'll get you out of bed every morning. What keeps us feet on the ground? It's a weird place we live in, man. So we need to understand Jesus is the image of the invisible God. First Colossians 15 says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Firstborn means heir, H-E-I-R, 
heir over all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible, invisible, whether thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And him, all things consist. He is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn or first heir from the dead. And all things he may have in preeminence. So we need to understand that, okay? So I just try to lead people to the Bible, try to bring it alive. When you read the Strong's Concordance, so you start finding out what these words mean the greek you understand that the bible is beautiful and it's amazing and it, and it brings stuff to life you learn about giants in genesis 6 4 a lot of people talk talk about that you learn about the, you know the, the creation you learn about uh, everything that's happening from genesis to revelation god knows the beginning from the end the end from the beginning it is all perfect and it what it it does what it does it, all the way from genesis to revelation is it leads you to believing in jesus and understanding that he came here to save us okay so i love all of you guys and i appreciate you and i will definitely love it if you can check out my show josh monday music and podcast youtube and josh monday christian and conspiracy podcast we take a uh, basic conspiracy show you how it relates to the bible or we just deep, deep, do a deep dive into conspiracies or deep dive into the bible everybody that's listening much love to you god loves you and i appreciate everybody that listens to this for sure make sure you give them a five-star review on apple and also on spotify to help his algorithm also if you could share his show share this show with as many people as you can because somebody might need to hear it i'm trying to plant seeds here it's up to god to water it it's up to you to continue to dig deep for god in the world thank you just want to take a moment here and thank Josh Monday for hanging out. That was absolutely outstanding. What a cool presentation. Really great guy. Fascinating perspective. And we appreciate your service, brother. Now, if you guys want to really get into this with us, check the link in the description down there for Patreon so that you can support your favorite show, number one. But number two, you get access to this massive afterthought that he and I go into here, which is very interesting. And I don't think you're going to want to miss it. So... Check that out as well as all the other ways uh, to enjoy your expansion. There's tons of content. And if you sign up for the right tier, you can join us for the in-person hangouts that we're having where you can ask these guests things. You can request people to come on. We'll bring them on. A few folks, come on down. We're, we're having a blast with those things. So you guys come sign up, hang out with us, support your favorite show. It's the new way forward. We're doing it. As well as our event space, guys. We are doing the Befriending Bigfoot event out there in Blairsville, Georgia. Absolutely gorgeous. May 15th through the 20th. Check the link in the show description down there for our befriending Bigfoot event. List of presenters there as well, including Trey Hudson, Alexander Petikoff, Scott and Sheila Granger, like Preston Dennett, all these people. Dave Zad's going to come hang out on All this amazing stuff, guys. Do not miss out on that. Uh, check for new prices as well. We have trimmed the fat on everything, so everything is railed down to its bare minimum just to make the thing happen. Uh, we're bringing light bulbs to screw in. That's how cheap it is. So... Go check it out, and uh, looking forward to seeing all of you in person. Very excited about this event. Now, also, just want to remind everybody to go out into this beautiful place, whatever the hell this thing is, and thank you for signing up and enjoying the afterthought. But while you're up at that and driving around listening to this stuff, get out of the left-hand lane, of course. Pick up a piece of litter if you got that floating around you, and, you know, just snag it up, toss it out. You know how to do it. And above all, and beyond anything else, guys, go out into this beautiful, beautiful reality, whatever the fuck this place is, and y'all just be good to one another. Thank you so much for watching, listening, engaging. It should be an awesome. We love you. See you next time.